In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the drawers for the bookcase that I started making in the last video I uploaded. Uh, this is a fairly complicated process because the drawers are not square. They don't have 90 degree angles on all four corners. So I wanted to go through in detail how I did this uh, step by step just to show you in case you want to try it on your own. So you've just seen me uh, cut and plane the rough maple that I'll be using for the fronts of the drawers. Now I want to make sure that these are all the same thickness. So I use some painter's tape and my marking gauge to go around each of the piece and then I plane down to the tape. This ensures that all the fronts will be the same width. I then uh, do pretty much the same process for all the sides of the drawers, uh, the, three, uh, the sides in the back, excuse me. And once I have that done, I move on to uh, truing it up with my shooting plane and um, sneaking up on that correct width for each of the drawers so that they slide into the carcass case. You can see I've already made two drawers above this. This video is going to focus on mainly the third drawer. I then use my marking gauge to measure the thickness of the back piece so that I can lay out my dovetails. Now I make sure to use the marking gauge on both ends of the back piece when I'm measuring the thickness because these pieces are hand planed and I want to make sure that the dovetails are perfect on both ends. Um, because they're hand planed, one end may be slightly um, thinner than the other. So by using the gauge on both ends, that avoids any problems. Then I use a sticking board to ply out, excuse me, plow out a groove for the bottoms of the drawers, starting with one of the sides here. Once I've done that, I take the um, same sticking board and the same setup, the same combination plane, and I take the back of the drawer and I go over it slightly, uh, lightly I should say, one pass or so, uh, just so that I have a line that I can see and I use this line when I cut the back of the drawer because it's going to be um, narrower than the sides so that you can slide the bottom in from the back. Then I take the same combination plane and I plow another groove on the back of the front of the drawers. Then it's off to cutting the dovetails. Standard procedure here, I just cut down the sides of the tails and then I use a coping saw to saw out the waste. I'll go back and clean this up with a chisel later off camera. And then I take a skew plane. Um, this one I've actually added a block to the fence because it's not quite thick enough to um, make a very, very uh, small step on the edge of the board from the end. Uh, and this step is used to align the tailboard with the pin board. Um, this is a great tip. I learned this from Rob Cosman through his channel years ago, and I really, really love it. Then I line up the tailboard with the pin board, and I mark out the pins. After I've done that, it's just a matter of cutting out all the waste. Um, there are different ways that you can cut out the waste if you want to chisel it out or cut it out with a, a coping saw. You know, it all works. It's really up to you. And then I use a saw usually to cut off the ends uh, of the pin board. If you don't have a tail vise like me, you can make one of these jigs that you can hold in your normal vise, um, which uh, brings the board up to around chest height and makes it a lot easier to see and to cut. I use the same skew plane to put a step on the back of these tails, but you got to be careful because this is for the front of the drawer and the edge of the board is not 90 degrees. It's actually on an angle. So when you index the fence, you got to make sure that you're not indexing along the flat part of the edge of the board because that will tip the plane up and you won't be able to cut, obviously. I then put the back pieces into right angle clamps so that I'm assured that the back of the drawer is at a 90 degree angle and then I take my angle gauge and I mark off the lengths of the sides of the drawer. I then tape up the sides so that the markings are in line with each other and then I cut down that line and I use my shooting board to true up the angle. Having the pieces taped together ensures that this angle is true on both sides and there are no spaces or gaps. After that, I take the front of the drawer, uh, one end I've already cut on the 74 degree angle, and I mark the other side so that I get the correct length for the front of the drawer. 
I then use the same jig I made for the shooting board to line up the tail board onto the end of the front of the drawers in order to mark off the tails and uh, cut out the pins. Uh, since I'm using maple, it's kind of hard to see the marks sometimes, so I'll use some painter's tape and then cut uh, through the painter's tape and remove it. This is kind of difficult though because you really are only allowed one cut. Uh, you can't kind of go over the marks because then you'll get multiple cuts on the tape and it's just kind of a mess. Then I line up the side of the drawer with the front uh, in order to mark the thickness. I'll just put one mark and then I'll go back in with a carpenter square and scribe that line across the end so I know how deep to cut each of these pins. Then I take another smaller carpenter square and I draw lines, mark lines perpendicular down uh, so that I know where to cut to. And then it's in with my uh, dovetail saw to cut down these pins. I'll speed this up again so that you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Uh, a couple things I wanted to point out is when I cut down the pins on these half blinds, I go way past the thickness line for the uh, sides of the drawers. And this is basically, uh, this is a, a very old technique actually. Um, and it allows you to cut out most of the waste, um, which makes chiseling it out later uh, a lot easier. And um, it's also a sign of a hand cut drawer because you can look into the drawer after it's done, you can see those saw marks. So this is what you end up with. Uh, then it's on to using the chisels to chisel out all this waste. This is always the hardest part of making half blinds. Uh, some guys use saws, or excuse me, uh, drills to drill out the waste, and then they use chisels. I just prefer to go in and do it all with chisels. Uh, it really doesn't take any much longer. Uh, and in my opinion, it's easier and more precise. And then it's time for a test fit. And you can see a little bit of a gap uh, on the front of the tails, but I can fix that later on with the old uh, glue and sawdust trick, so I'm not too worried about that. After I get all the joinery redone, it's time for a test fit, just to make sure that everything is still square in the back. And then I go on to making the bottom of the drawer. Uh, I did this off camera, sorry, I just forgot to tape any of that. I then used a low angle bevel up plane to smooth out the front of the drawers, uh, because this is hard maple and um, it was kind of difficult to plane. And then I glued everything up using calls that were cut on the same angle as the front of the drawers. After that, I put the drawers in my vise in order to plain flush the joints. Um, after this, if there are any gaps, I did use some leftover sawdust and glue to uh, fill those in so that you couldn't see them. This is a great technique. Um, this is one of the reasons I love having a shoulder vise is so that I can plane the drawers in this manner. It's kind of hard to do with a, a, a metal vise that has that screw on the bottom because the drawers won't fit past the screw. Then I secured the bottom of the drawers using one nail at the back. I think I also ran a bead of glue in the groove on the back of the front of the drawer only uh, just to kind of keep it secure where it is. But usually if your groove is deep enough and goes around uh, all three sides of the drawer, one nail at the back is sufficient for keeping that bottom in place. Now that the drawers were done, I could finally uh, make the back of the carcass. Uh, I made this out of plywood, um, really not much to explain here. And then I went on to turning the knobs for the drawer fronts. I ch used cherry again, uh, just to kind of bring the whole design together. After I turned these knobs, I then used some friction oil to um, put a nice finish on them while they're still on the lathe. I then cut the knobs to size and then proceeded to drill holes in the front of the drawers for the knobs. Uh, this was really the only tricky part of uh, the whole process um, because the drawer fronts are on an angle. I drew a line down the front of the drawers that I could index when drilling these holes to make sure that they were perpendicular to the rest of the carcass. And this is how it turned out. Uh, all in all, I am very happy with this piece. Uh, it is much better than the original bookcase drawer unit that I made 17 years ago that I talked about in the last video. Um, it smells great, looks great, 
and uh, the drawers are perfect and uh, it was a lot of fun so i hope you enjoy that build um look forward to more videos thanks a lot